a book to take home, your own chingona tile <laughs> to take home. <laughs> okay, and that's just the beginning because I'm also going to announce that we've got so many plans. But now that San Antonio stole you back, we have many, many plans. And I think, I think you're going to find that we're going to make sure that books flood the area. Uh, I'm going to get a cue from Rodrigo Bravo. He's our sound guy. Are, are we on live stream? Yes. Oh, excellent. So thank you, Rodrigo. Welcome to the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center Latino Bookstore, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tony Diaz, a Libro Traficante. I'm very proud to be the literary curator for what is possibly Texas's only Latino bookstore. What? <laughs> but I also don't want you to mistake this for a transactional experience. This is not what you're going to get at a corporate bookstore, which Nuestra Familia could be at. They chose to be here. And I'm going to give you a context, but I want one thing clear. You're not here to buy a product. You are here to join a movement. Okay. And I want to thank the, the board members of Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. Our, our director is Christina Bailly. And this is basically our pillar event. So every second Friday of the month, we host a Texas author series. And I do want to tell you a little bit about that. I do want to mention some of the sponsors. We want to thank Texas Commission on the Arts, the Andrew Mellon Foundation, City of San Antonio Department of Arts and Culture, HEB, the Ford Foundation, National Endowments for the Arts, and Nuestra Palabra, Latino writers having their say. And I want you to know, too, that we are live streaming this. I want to give a shout out to Nuestra Palabra, Latino Writers Heaven to Say. Rodrigo Bravo is our tech fellow right there, also a sound engineer. And what that means is that right now, if you have your phone out, you know, back in the old days, if someone was speaking and you had your phone out, that was rude. Nowadays, if we're speaking and you don't have your phone out, that's rude because we ain't said anything we're posting then. But now, so it's like, <laughs> so we hope that you will actively take pictures, put it online, so your friends can be celosas y celosas that they weren't here. But I want you to know too that as this is live streaming on the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center Facebook page, we also had the pleasure of interviewing you. Uh, we had Gabi on the radio show, y también Dolores Huerta on the radio show, which was fantastic, who wrote the forward. We should applaud the Dolores and Gabi. And what's fantastic is that we have that interview. It aired on 90.1 FM KPFT. The video appears on fox26houston.com. It's a podcast that we'll share. So if you've got a community center, teachers, familia that still want to it will air on fox26houston.com. We're going to share this version because it's a little different. It's the actual presentation of the book. And then it'll also be a podcast. Why? We're not playing. You're making history. And I want you to know, too, as well, before we talk about tonight's special event, if you come back in July, we've got uh, another. We're surrounded by awesome Latinas and Chicanas tonight. Uh, uh, next, next second Friday in July, we got Dr. Elizabeth Farfan Santos. She's got her book, Undocumented Motherhood, Conversations on Love, Trauma, and Border Crossing. And she'll be presenting that night. And then also she'll be with Dr. Christopher Carmona, who's an author and professor at, um, at Trinity. He's got his book, El Rinche. We're also teaming up, and we're going to have a guest appearance from our new friend from the San Antonio Library. She's got some special announcements for you, too. Okay, um, Because we're teaming up with the San Antonio Library for an off-site event. It'll be July 22nd. Another awesome Latina writer, Reina Grande, will be featured there. Her book is A Ballad of Love and Glory. She'll be with Professor Omar Valerio Jimenez. They're going to talk about the legacy of the Rangers, the history of the Irish Battalion, which you may have heard about, that were involved during the Mexican, uh, Mexican War. And 
It's a free presentation as well at the library. We'll have flyers for that. And then we're going to keep pushing. So tonight, of course, I I'm going to introduce you at the end of this, but I want you to know what we're building up. We want to thank Congresista Joaquin Castro, who provided the Latino Bookstores Literacy Program with a $100,000 grant. And I want to tell you what that's going to be used for because it ties into you because we're going to be busy. We're going to be good friends for a long time. Okay. Um, with the funds, we pay a teacher to write lesson plans for the book. We started this in April with Diana Lopez. This means that a teacher that's in the classrooms with our youth talks about how to use the book. We're going to give those lesson plans away. What happens then too? the writer visits that school. Very cool, no? We're not done. With the grant, we buy a copy of the book for every student in that classroom. They get it signed that day. We give a classroom set to the school so that they have the lesson plans and the books so they can keep teaching the book. We now have also a culture club. We give the teacher a special poster. It's like a coupon. And she puts her name on there. She puts a student's name on there. We started it last month. The students come in and they get another free book. And you should have seen the students who came and they thought, is this really free? And it's a beautiful way to start the family library. And we're going to be doing that with Latina Leadership Lessons, 50 Latinas Speak. So that'll be coming up in Hispanic Heritage Month. So. And I shouldn't say this till we've approved it, but I can't help myself. Uh, we're also talking to the San Antonio Library. Um, uh, Sarah de la Rosa will be by later. We're working on a special project then too, where we're gonna give 40 books to the San Antonio Library so that a copy of each will go to every single branch for our community to have access to. And we hope that we can start that with your book as well. So we're not playing. We are not playing, okay? <laughs> And I did want to give you um, those overviews as, I, as, as I'm about to turn over the mic to a dear friend of all of us. And she goes above and beyond. This really is a very powerful book. Uh, we're so happy to host Latino Leadership Lessons, 50 Latinas Speak. And if I understand correctly, is this one of your first readings in San Antonio? The first one in Texas. And... When you come up tonight and get your book signed, I want to tell you something special that you did. So you created, you had created by Cristina Martinez, these cool tiles that say chingona. I want to be a chingona tonight. Can I be a chingona tonight? Excellent. Another one is the chingona tejas. Ay, que bonito, no? Verdad? And then, mira aquí, you can get the mints in there. I thought it was a belt buckle at first, pero mira. <laughs> now, they are free, kind of. Kind of. If you are chingona enough to buy two copies, and if you bought one and get another one, we're going to make sure that you get this free, awesome token with you tonight. If you buy four, two, verdad? Uh, and I think it's a lovely toque. But here's what I want to say. You're taking home a story for your family library. I'm about to hand over the mic to Delia, but I want you to know that you're not just buying this book. This book will replenish or start your family library. When people come over, they will see it. And you're chingona tile. <laughs> and you will say, I was there at Delia's first reading in Tejas. I was there before she started visiting the schools during Hispanic Heritage Month. I was there, got my book signed, took a picture with her, and guess what? I'm spreading the word as well. Because this is a movement. This book will change the lives of Latinas. And I want to say one thing to the live stream. We as Chicano and Latinos have to listen to nuestras hermanas. We need to be wise. We need to embrace this book as well because we all will learn from this wisdom. 
Ladies and gentlemen, from the bottom of our hearts, it gives us a great deal of pride to welcome to Latino Bookstore, Delia Garcia. Wow. Did I turn it off? Can you hear me? Thank you. I feel famous with that introduction. Thank you, Tony, so much. Um, and thank you, Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center and the board members and sponsors. Um, this really is, as, as Tony mentioned, it is my first uh, book signing in Texas. It is also like a homecoming because I have uh, been in D.C. for the past 13 years and now back in Texas. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, so I'm getting a little motion for two seconds. Um, but also, I wanted to share uh, this evening with um, some very special people in my life. Um, usually, you see book signings with just the author, but this book is more than just me. It's, it's the world. Um, it's 50 of my friends, and I, those of you know me, I have more than 50 friends. I could, I could keep writing for the rest of my life, uh, but this is a snapshot of what uh, leadership looks like from a Latin Um I can't go without saying some thank yous as well. Um, it, I wrote this book during the pandemic, so I want to share with you why I wrote the book. Um, I wrote the book because it needed to be done. It needed to be done a long time ago. It's important for us to the world to see what leadership looks like and what women leadership looks like and what Latina leadership looks like. Um, but there was one person in particular room who kept like badgering me and I'm going to recognize him because he's a mentor of many of us here at the front. And I would like to please stand. Andy Hernandez, please stand, please stand. There were times where during the pandemic, I just was in a different space and he'd be like, so how, how are you doing on the book? And I'm like, oh, um, but I, I, I love having mentors. I talk about uh, one of my top 10 lessons is the importance of mentors and how um, that has helped me in my life. The why of this book, the reason why I wrote this book is to do three things, to uplift and uh, honor those who have paved the way, like the Dolores Huerta, who wrote the foreword of the book, to empower our current uh, sisters, our, uh, leaders, and to grow more leaders uh, who will read this. And, and it's not just for Latinas, it's for everyone, but it is important also to see ourselves. Hence is why this is a mirror. Let me see, so I can see myself. Um, a lot of this stuff that we're going to be giving away again, if you get two books, um, you can have one of the door prizes. Uh, as you'll see, one of my top, my number one of my 10 lessons is to be chingona, uh, to believe that. That's something that I've struggled with, to own my own power. And, and I had to like write it and publish it and to make sure that I have my sisters and everybody around me um, believe and breathe that. Um, for those of you who I have not met, um, I was born and raised in Kansas. I consider San Antonio my second home. I was elected in the state house representative, made history in 2004 as the first Latina elected. Um, thank you. <laughs> and there was another famous line that Andy would say, Delia, you don't want to be the first and the last. Uh, and that was something that was always been ingrained and making sure that I bring other people with me and always whatever I learn to make sure I teach and share that information. Um, I went on to serve as Secretary of Labor of my home state and lived in Washington, D.C. and ran a couple of national nonprofits and now work for the federal government and I get to blessed to be back here in Texas. Um, I want to really pivot to talk up to my sisters up here because the, the importance of making sure that everybody knows I want them to see themselves in this book. And for every person that's in the book, you see yourself. Uh, and I, I'm so excited for you to, to see yourself in the book. Uh, also, besides the door prizes of these, um, we have uh, bookmarks. Uh, you can follow us. One of the things that Tony mentioned is this is the movement. Uh, we launched see, three months ago, and we've been in Los Angeles. We've been in Washington, D.C. We've been in Kansas. And this is our first one in Texas. We're now going to be in schools and curriculums, and this will, San Antonio will be the first, and we're going to the last, and we're going to keep going. Um, and so whatever comes of this, I want it to start here, and I'm very blessed to start it here. 
But now I'd like to share with you some superstar chingona to my left. I'm going to introduce each one of them, and I'd like to ask them to share with you all, uh, to come up here and share with you all one of their lessons so that you can get a sneak peek. And if you haven't bought the book, you're going to be inspired to buy the book, to hear one of their lessons. Uh, I must say that every time I read uh, a submission from one of the ladies, um, this, gift, this book was supposed to be a gift, a gift to readers. And when I would receive something, it was I was receiving the gift. Uh, everything was powerful. And, and, and I'm going to let them share with you then. But if I had this, I wish I had this in my hands. Um, when I was a state legislator, there were nights we would be debating budgets that two or three in the morning. I saw Nina Parales. Where's Nina? There she is. Uh, shout out to Maldives. Please take a picture. Is that Marisol next to you? Is that Marisol? Okay, okay, I've got my glasses on. Okay, actually, I have to share this story because talk about essence of chingona. When I saw Nina, I was like, I got to share the story. And now that I see Marisol, this is even better. Okay, pause. We're going to come back to you in a second. One of my favorite stories of, of my experience of making laws in, in the state house, of the, and mind you, in the state of Kansas, um, Kansas was one of the fourth state in the country to pass in state tuition for students undocumented students to go to college uh, at an in-state tuition rate. So don't think Kansas is too crazy because we were the fourth, y'all. We were after Texas, yes, but there was one night, and I'll never forget, it was March 30th of 2005. It was my first, it was my third month, fresh, first year of my freshman year as a state, state legislator. And talk about uh, the power of learning. When I was here in San Antonio back in 1998, 99, I went to UTSA and I met a slew of amazing people, including Maldef. Thank goodness I met them because fast forward when I was making laws for the state of Kansas, there was a night, it was, it was 1.45 in the morning to be exact because I wrote it. Um, the, the law, uh, because it passed in 2004, this is now 2005, was trying to be repealed. And it was trying, trying to be repealed by someone from the other side of the aisle. And it was in the middle of the night. I make a phone call to Marisol at at 12.45 in the morning and wake her up and thank goodness she answers my phone call. She saved, she saved the whole state of Kansas. Uh, thank you, Ramalda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but I was, I'm not an attorney, uh, but I have a lot of attorney friends. And I was able to say, okay, homies on the house floor, uh, go up to the microphone and, and waste some time so that I could have time to call Ramalda to find out the answers. I call Marisol, Marisol, I'm talking really fast. This is Delia, this is an amendment on the house floor. I need your help, this is what it says. And she's like, oh, okay, I just woke her up. I'm reading it, I'm writing chicken scratch. I'm like, okay, I got this. And I press my button, I go to the front of uh, the podium. So you all the legislature, you see the media up in the gallery. Again, this is like one in the morning. I'm shaking. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna say because I couldn't read my writing. <laughs> But I remember a distinct moment that I look up in the gallery. And I remember like, feeling the power of my abuelitas and my grandparents, their presence, that I knew like whatever was going to come out of my mouth was supposed to be said. And it came out. Thank you, Tamalda. <laughs> Needless to say, when I spoke that night, you could hear a pin drop, right? I go back to my seat, and I, and I, I'm not, I got choked up because I can't hear tonight. That night, I, I had been in a position, especially as you know, a woman, especially a woman of color, like I had to keep it together. I couldn't, I couldn't get choked up like I did right now. There's a, a trick that you're supposed to pinch yourself so that you don't get choked up. So I'm over here talking all economics, make sure you don't vote for this. And I, and I then ask, please, colleagues, I ask you to join me and vote down this amendment. I go down, I sit to my seat, my colleague leans over, and, like, and I was like, don't touch me, I'm gonna lose it. Um, <laughs> and the vote goes, and it's red and green. We kill the amendment by five votes. Yes. <laughs> I share that story because it was, it was that night that was the first time in my, in my legislative career that I knew that representation matters. Um, relationships matter. 
uh, chingonas matter. Um, so anyways, I, I love sharing that story because it's a powerful story of like sometimes when we doubt ourselves, I didn't know like a few minutes before that, that that was going to happen. And then I was just so empowered after that. And to this day, I would love to say that was 2005. We're now in 2023. The law is still a law in the state of Kansas and in many states. So, yes. Thank you. See, I could write multiple books on all the Chingonas that I know. So, but we're going to talk about three tonight. So first, I'd like to invite up La Doctora. Oh, can she stand does up from here? Do Tony, does she need to stand up here with, for the camera? Okay. I digress. Sorry, y'all. Again, as she's doing that, a plug. If you buy two books, you can choose any of the four items in the basket over back there. Testing one, two, three. Are you, are you chingona? <laughs> the testing one, two, three. I can start singing. Um, testing one, two, three. Oh, testing one, two, three. Oh, sorry. You didn't hear anything I said earlier. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we'll do more. So I'd like to bring up our first guest. Um, as I share with you, um, many women in the book are in it. I, I can't wait for you to read about all of them. But we have here La Doctora Laura Baverena. She is the CEO and founder of Viva Politics. And I'd like for her to share one of her lessons with you right now. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out and uh, all of your chingonas, of course, you all know. Uh, and thank you so much. And when Delia had uh, asked me to put this chapter or the chapter together, it was really hard. I think my first draft, I had like 30 lessons. So bringing it down to 10. And actually, people don't know this. I mentioned this before in an interview that we did before was that I actually had 11. I had a pilon, right? Because for me, you always got to do a pilon, right? Uh, and that was the lesson, always do a little extra. But for me, of, of my lessons, I think uh, it's uh, pick your family. Uh, I am very blessed that I have an amazing biological family. Uh, my papa's in Mexico. Uh, also, uh, I like to refer to myself as page nine for the book. <laughs> Pagina nueve. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm very blessed to have some incredible parents who've been very supportive uh, throughout all my crazy decisions uh, throughout life from deciding I wanted to go to film school to then later uh, deciding to get my PhD and then being a political consultant, which is like crazy. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I still don't think my parents quite know what I do, but I'm also blessed to have some amazing siblings as well and, and extended family. Uh, and they've just been amazing. But I also have the opportunity to choose my own family. And many of, uh, actually, the truth is all of them are here. Let's not lie. <laughs> they're, they're all in the back waving and they're here. Wonderful. You know, Noda, Hilda, Mel, uh, and, just everyone. I, I just can't uh, mention them all, but that has just been such an important part of for me to be able to have that, my own family, my own familia, to be able to cry, to be vulnerable, uh, to be angry, to be very, 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 very sad, which happens a lot. Uh, I, I love telling stories about how, yeah, I got in his face and I said this and I said this and I said this. And then I go home and I'm like, ah! and I just cry because, um, you know, you think you're all chingona and then you go home and you're like, oh, shit, I'm not, you know. Uh, but um, so I'm very blessed to have an incredible family and I do thank them and I love them. And they uh, have always been there from thick and thin. And I also have, oh, yeah, this partner guy. Hi, honey. Uh, I also have a husband who reminds me as well of my chingona -ness. And I'm very, very, very blessed to have someone who supports me in all my crazy endeavors, uh, all these crazy crazy campaigns that we work on and work till late at night. And I'm just so grateful that he, um, he actually washes my chonis. So thank you, husband, <laughs> for doing that. I ain't got time for that. So thank you, dear. <laughs> True story. 
<laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. Thank you for buying the book. Thank you for all your support. And uh, I'll pass it back over. Next, we have another superstar. And I can't wait to tell you about something. And then some of y'all have probably seen this very cool documentary. But let's bring up Frankie Gonzalez. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so how we met is we were doing campaigns together and we were working late nights. And when I learned about her story and everything she was doing, I'm like, that was, I was doing the book and I was like, oh yeah, I, I, girl, I gotta have you. So thank you. Hello, Frankie Gonzalez Wolf, very proud trans Latina. Um, about me briefly. Yes, I am in this book, I'm very honored and I get to be amongst other 49 other brilliant Latinas in this book. I am the very first trans Latina to be the chief of staff to any elected official in the state of Texas. <laughs> and I am also traveling the country with a documentary called A Run For More. It's about me. It's currently airing on PBS. Um, so if you want to go to pbs.com, you can see it um, right now on PBS. If not, you can rent it on Amazon Prime. Um, so that's about me. But my leadership lesson um, is something that is important for me only because of what we do, right? Like um, we talk about mentors and what we do for a living and, you know, being in politics is important that we learn from like the, the greats like Laura Barbarena, who has been doing this for a very, very long time. And I've had the privilege of being able to work amongst, you know, some of the greats, Choco Mesa, who taught me everything that I know. And, but the one thing that I took from everyone talking to me about what it is uh, to do the work, it's about not only doing the work, but it's doing it in the shadows. We don't always have to be motivated by the spotlight. Um, so it's about just the work. Um, and I, I believe and at first I was like, well, when I look at TV, we don't, you know, when there's violence happening in the street, that's when we see politicians run to go, you know, have an opportunity to be in front of the spotlight, right? Because that's when we somewhat affect change, but we weren't doing the work. We, we talked a pretty picture, but nothing was really, really getting done. And so that's where my motivation became is what do we do as people when we just really focus on the work? We don't have to do it because of a spotlight. We do it because it's the right thing to do, right? When we talk about what was happening in the border, we do the work and we go and we help our hermanos and hermanas that are trying to come over here because they're trying to better their lives. We do it because it's the right thing to do. And we're going to continue to fight for our communities because it is the right thing to do. And I don't need a spotlight in order for me to do it, I do it because it's the right thing to do. And I'm going to continue to fight for this community along the greats because it's in my heart. It's a passion. And you haven't seen the last of me yet. Thank you. Our next guest, um, and I love how well, the ladies mentioned that who we surround ourselves around. And I do want to give a, a quick shout out to my sorority sisters. I saw a few. So if you're a capital to Kai, please stand. Wait. Okay. Yes. If you're an HLI, hermana, please stand. An HLI. Okay. <laughs> so if you can make your way up here, Patricia. Um, I've known Patricia. We went to school at St. Mary's University here in San Antonio. Um, but the importance of, of again, seeing yourself being surrounded by other, again, chingonas. Uh, was very important for me at every point in my life. I'm one of five daughters, and I had two older sisters and two younger sisters, always like that. I had a very strong family, my dad's side, my mother's side, and all of, of my abuelitas always seeing that, you know, our family, my mother, or my grandmother started at the oldest family-owned Mexican restaurant in Kansas, and my now little sisters are now running it. And so from as a child to my, in college, as in uh, Capital Sakai Latina Service Sorority, NHLI, uh, I got to really experienced something very powerful and and Patricia was a huge part of that so without further ado Patricia Mejia with the San Antonio Foundation
So unlike the other two, one I'd have to bring the book up to remember what I wrote in there. Um, but I, I also, one of the rules I'm going to uh, refer to or uh, lessons is that you break the rules if they don't apply for you. And so she gave me four minutes, but I'm going to break the rules if they don't apply. Uh, because I, I really wanted to take a split moment to thank Velia. Um, and try not to get too emotional. Uh, but anybody who knows Delia, which is everybody in this room, knows that she's through a corazón. And that she did this, she, she's very modest in saying that she did it over uh, COVID. She's been thinking about this for a very, very long time. Um, and she ideated with many people in the room. She did it while she was working at NEA. She did it while she was uh, working as the Secretary of Labor. to seek advice. And this is someone who is making change in some of the most difficult areas. And so I just want to take a quick moment to, to challenge each of us, right? We get stuck in our own world. And she realized how important it is to tell our story. And she took time to do it with a little bit of pushing from, from folks. Um, <laughs> but I am so grateful to you. And I'm grateful because of my little buddy book. Because Carito, when she got this, for those of you who know I have a little one, when she got this, um, she said, Mama, I see you, I see my Tia, I see my Nina. And I think that's what the whole purpose was. And I'm so grateful to you uh, for teaching us in so many ways what we should be doing. <laughs> So I started with my mama and I ended with my, my grandma, but the one that I'm going to talk about uh, it, is something that I think is just so pertinent to the time that each of us, I think, referred to, but was number four, which is you can't always change hearts, but you can jump at the opportunity to change policy and the rules. We already know that most policy and rules were not created to benefit all. Therefore, use your leadership to change any and all that you can get your hands on to be more inclusive and leave the conversion of hearts to the creator. Um, the reason that's so important to me is I'm in philanthropy, right? And I've been in philanthropy for half of my career. And the first question that I've asked is, why isn't the Guadalupe funded? Why isn't, who was here earlier, Sandra Morales, who I absolutely adore, who grew up in 78207, who now leads a nonprofit in 78207, to ask the hard question. And then, you know, worry about the conversion of hearts, whether or not they decide to do it for the right reasons. We've given a long enough time for the moral right thing, and they didn't choose it. So just get your hands on the rules and change it. And I'm super proud to say that that's what I've been focused on and, and have completely changed the metrics, completely changed what means, what means what matters and what means something. And I'm, I'm just absolutely privileged and humbled to be in the room with each of you all. Um, who have done that for so long. And thank you, Christina, so much for your leadership. I'm appreciative of, of what your vision has been. And if you didn't get a, a chance to catch the article in the newspaper recently, please uh, make sure you read it. And thank you to the board members who are here to be so supportive of this work. Thank you, Delia. <laughs> As you can see, the love, you can just feel it in the book, and there's so much more of that. Um, I don't know what's uh, going to come of this book. Um, I had faith and I jumped at it pretty much on a lot of the stuff that I've done. Uh, I did it afraid and, um, and I'm glad I did. I was really frustrated. I still am when I watch the news and I see our babies being massacred. I see people trying to make laws about my body and the bodies of people I care about. And so I thought it's about time that we talk about who can change some of that and be the change that we want to be. Um, I'd like to just uh, pull it back to Tony. Um, if we want to open it up for a couple questions. And then before we have some cake, I would like to present the ladies with something different. Another round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. That's fantastic. We have a couple other chingonas to bring up here uh, because y'all have shared some powerful stories. Um, but I do want to say one thing. 
I'm going to depress you for a little bit, but then you'll leave happy. Um, none of this is guaranteed. None of this has been given to us. And if we don't have leaders like y'all, it can all go away. I say that because I want to bring up uh, the uh, Chingona. I don't think that's her official title. It's executive director, but executive Chingona. I'm uh, uh, Because it was her vision years ago that said she wanted to have a Latino bookstore. And I say all this because if we follow the metrics of corporate publishing, there's no bookstore here. We are changing that. So please, uh, please welcome her. Uh, we're in her castle. Uh, please welcome Christina Bailly. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, lovely chingonas over here. They're so beautiful. Um, thank you, and you know, I was really looking forward to today because this is a very special book, a very special presentation, and I see a lot of chingonas out here, too. I was like, wow, when I walked in, I thought, oh, everybody's here. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Um, thank you for, for being here. Um, as you know, this is the Guadalupe Cult Cultural Arts Center, and I always have to do my commercials. Um, my commercials this time is that we are in the Latino Bookstore and the Progreso Community Gallery. This is the community gallery. The exhibit that we have up right now is was in conjunction with our annual Tejano Conjunto Festival. And this is an exhibit about the Acosta family that were luthiers in here in San Antonio. And they were the well-known uh, makers of guitars and bajo sextos. And I'm going to nerd out a little bit on Conjunto music here. But if some of you have heard about the bajo sextos, the Macias family, Macias bajo sextos, um, the Acostas uh, predate uh, the Macias family. And actually the elder Jaime Macias worked for the Acosta family. So, you know, these are part of our, the stories, uh, local stories, uh, cultural stories that are kind of lost. And, you know, recently we've had some uh, staff members that have gotten to know them, have uncovered, you know, some of the history. And uh, that's what you see on the walls here. Um, I think they're still trying to uncover a lot of this history. So uh, if you by any chance go up and see any photos and anything that you recognize in any of those photos, um, let our staff know to give you an email address of who to write that to. Because part of the intention in putting this up was to gather more information, gather more stories, you know, that, that have been lost. Um, the other, um, now I'm, I am going to make a couple of commercials because I always need to thank our funders, of course. It's the City of San Antonio Department of Arts and Culture, the Texas Commission on the Arts, the Mellon Foundation, and the Ford Foundation. And as of just yesterday, I got a very nice email uh, announcing us an award letter for a $50,000 grant from the San Antonio Area Foundation. <laughs> and we had been trying to get that grant for a long time, and we hadn't gotten it. So when Patricia says, you know, that things, you know, structures needed to change, you know, in order for... Uh, certain groups, you know, to have access to these resources. She's not lying. It's true. You know, we, we just witnessed it, you know, and they've been working at it, I think, for several years, you know, and little by little, and we've been noticing the change at the Area Foundation. Um, I also have to thank them uh, a couple of years ago that they made a big difference for us, too. Uh, there was an initiative that was being planned together with the Ford Foundation, um, that we received also a special award, a special grant that year um, that was matched $50,000 from the Area Foundation was matched with another $50,000 from the Ford Foundation. And this came right in 2020, right at the right time. <laughs> so, so we really appreciate it. But they said you, that, that work made a difference here. You know, it's really making a difference here. So muchísimas gracias. And um, also, I want to do another uh, uh, little quick little uh, mention 
uh, Frankie, we were happy to to uh, screen your film last year here at Cine Festival, uh, which, by the way, is coming up again July 12th through the 16th. And unfortunately, I missed it because I got COVID right during Cine Festival. So, so I missed I missed your screening. Yeah. I, I was not here for it. But you know, so this is that's another function of the Guadalupe. You know, we were we screened this film, and now it's going to be on PBS. And it's on Amazon. That's great. But people got to see it here first. <laughs> here. <laughs> so we do have Cine Festival coming up July 12th through the 16th. Uh, you can look on our website and our social media pages. And then last thing I'm going to say, and uh, because I am going to ask for your help, everybody's help, uh, in a bit, we're going to pass these out, these flyers. We're going through something very exciting. We are doing a campus master plan, uh, which means uh, with a, a generous gift in 2021, um, we were able to hire an architecture firm to do a campus master plan for the entire Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center campus. People don't know that we own and manage uh, um, nine properties right here on Brasso Streets. From this corner right here, actually three out of the four buildings on this corner are managed by the Guadalupe. Um, and then all the way up to El Paso Street and next to uh, Lanier High School. So we have a big campus and you know some of the buildings are deteriorated and we want to fix them. So, but we're doing this in a trying to do this in a thoughtful way. So we hired an architecture firm to help us analyze all our programs and what our, our programmatic needs are and what the community needs are, you know, so that we can uh, develop this area, right? Because this area is a newly designated cultural district. It was designated as a cultural district la two years ago, you know, so, so this is a cultural district, you know, and it's one of the few Latino cultural districts in the state of Texas. Um, and the Guadalupe is kind of anchors it. So, so we really want to make sure we have a nice campus and we know there's a lot of work that we need to do with our buildings. Um, so we would like your input. We have a survey out and we have the flyers over there. There's a QR code that can take you in there. You can give your input there, you know, just say what you like on programming, what thoughts you have on buildings, on campus, what you would like to see happening. And then along with that, uh, we're also thankful to our local TERS board that uh, granted $3.5 million to renovate our Guadalupe Theater. Yes. So we're going to start that reno We're actually starting that the design process already for the renovation of the theater, and we will probably start going into construction next year. But the theater is probably going to is going to be shut down this fall uh, because it's falling apart. It's, it's uh, we get stressed out every time we have events in there now. Um, so you know it's it's got lots of problems that need fixing. So, so the theater is going to be shut down pretty soon this fall. Um, but, you know, it's for a good reason. We're not going to have a space for our programs. And we'll figure that out, what we're going to do in the meantime, uh, you know, for some of our bigger programs. Um, but, but that's coming down the pipeline, too. So, we'll, again, we'll appreciate all of your input by grabbing one of these flyers or up at the front and, go, you know, going to that Q QR code. And giving us, you know, giving us your input in the survey. And uh, last, I want to thank our board chair, Ms. Cynthia Munoz, who's right here. Thank you. And she's been leading us for these changes, too. Uh, you know, Ms. Mas, ladies, thank you very much for your leadership and for your example that uh, is an inspiration. You know, and it, it, it inspires us all when we all get stuck, right? We all get stuck at times. <laughs> and we all get like discouraged and so so knowing you know that everybody's keeping the course you know just is, is a real motivator para, para seguir adelante thank you thank you so much Cristina and I promise you we are getting we're gonna get near the cake I, I'm gonna tell you one more depressing thing and then it's all good news after that a cake okay um Again, I'm, I'm fired up and I'm, I'm excited, but let's not forget the need. I know you don't forget the need. And I also want to remind you, the reason I'm called the Libro Traficante 
is because in 2012, Arizona legislators banned our history and culture. We united and we overturned that. And what we learned then is that we have to do this work in the community. And that is within our power. So that's, that's the bad news. The great news is we overturned that together. The great news is today, you start your own family library, you replenish it, and here's, here's more great news. Um, so as I mentioned, in a, in a little bit, you're gonna get your, uh, your cake. <laughs> and don't forget to get your edition signed. Get two, why are you gonna get two? Why do you want two copies? Verdad, verdad. But by the way, uh, on our radio show, we had long discussions. You're exactly right. How we got to change views? We had long discussions with our with our uh, board at the radio station. We're like, of course, we can say chingona on the air, and we can. <laughs> um, so, um, so that's one thing. The other thing is, um, we had a meeting recently with the Texas Book Festival. And they are excited to work with the Latino bookstore. And um, I'm going to wind up sitting on the, the, the Latinx committee. Uh, and we want make, to make sure that our books are represented over there. So one of the first books we're going to recommend is Latina Leadership Lessons. Por supuesto. Por supuesto. <laughs> and then I guess, I guess what I want to say is that at the end of the day, this really is the beginning because when we have the lesson plans, you said, you know, now you're in San Antonio, you'd be very happy to walk into the classrooms to teach this book. And I just want to remind you how amazing you all are. I'm a professor and for a Latina who has the confidence, who knows the power that we wield, for you, to just walk into a classroom, and I don't mean just of the younger students, I mean of college age students, you, you change their perspective. They look at you and they're like, wow, you're so cool, you're so smart, you're so successful. They might not say it, but that they might not say it, but I promise you, when they're done, they tell me about it, they write about it, and that really is a big, big impact. And I think it's powerful then that we can take it to that next level when we start having these workshops. And what that'll mean will be um, that I want to remind you, and I want to go step by step by step because the grant's important, but again, the grant will run out. But what we're doing with C Congressman Castro's grant will be, there will be 25 copies for the students in class that day, plus 25 for the classroom set, and I'm about to bring up our dear friend, Sarah. Is Sarah here? Sarah, if you can kind of come. Sarah, why don't you come up here? Because we haven't approved this yet. So don't, don't get mad at me. The boss is, I haven't approved it with the boss yet. We're going to pitch it to the boss. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I mean, now with our partner, who's uh, interim uh, director of the Latino uh, reading collection series, we want to also add 40 more copies to be distributed to every San Antonio Public Library branch. So please welcome Sarah De La Rosa. Talk a little bit about that. Our new friend. Hello. As Tony said, my name is Sarah De La Rosa. I'm the interim uh, program coordinator slash librarian for the Latino Collection and Resource Center at Central Library, the Enchilada, the big red library downtown. And um, the Enchilada red was the paint color. But yeah, I'm just um, super excited to be partnering with Tony Diaz um, and the uh, Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center, hopefully. <laughs> um, and we're here to support your needs. We have a lot of awesome programming with the LCRC um, that extends from not only author talks, but like art classes, music, um, hopefully curriculum, like teacher resources, things like that. So I just wanted to introduce myself and thank you all. And you can always reach out to me if you have any program ideas or anything like that. We're here for the community. Sarah, qu quick question. So it says interim. So what does that mean? So I'm, yeah, the temporary one of their- Temporary. But I'm trying to do anything and everything I can in collaboration with communities so that they 
hate and that's why it's just protocol you have to apply in an interview but um that's a big plus even if it is temporary i'm gonna do anything else that i can so if some of us call and remind them that you came here and you're funneling our books through, might that inspire the library to change the title of the permanent, maybe? Amen. Okay, very good. Sarah de la Rosa. All right. Y'all have been a really wonderful audience. I know you want to get to the cake. So I believe we're going to bring the cake up here and cut it. And then you want to give your crew a special recognition, no? Okay, you want to do the recognition first? Hmm? So, and we're going to do two questions, two questions, um, because you, you have them here live, no? And then this will be recorded. T students will hear it. We, can, we have time for two questions only. What? Because there's a lot of y'all, okay? <laughs> there's a ton of y'all. So we'll take two questions, and then we'll get to the cake, and then the special recognition. So this is a little bit extra credit. So uh, who's got the first question for our panel? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your testimonial in honor of Frankie. That means a lot. Uh, second question. Statement. Yes. Uh, what was or what is? <laughs> I would love to say that it was past tense. Um, I, I have to start with thanking you, Lorena. Um, people like you, uh, like Andy, um, who, you know, just like Delia described on the, uh, on the floor, right? Legend floor, same thing in philanthropy, right? You, you stand up there showing the, I guess maybe to answer your question, let me start with saying, use the data. I think the thing that I started with was using the data. And that for me has been so helpful, I think moving policy forward. But emotionally, I mean, I could nerd out on, on what it strategically took, um, but emotionally was to really pull in from the, the love, the cariño, the wisdom um, from, from you, from my lovely hermanas uh, here to my right and to my familia who is not necessarily blood related as Delia described. Um, and I think uh, maybe the only thing that I've, I still struggle with, and this said is or was, uh, is that I still have to really work on believing in my own power. Um, when I think about all that my mom and my grandmother and so many others have gone through to allow me to be here, I've said this many times, I was raised on $463 a month by a single mom. Um, and somehow her passion, her commitment to what was right, to do the right thing, allowed me this very privileged position. And um, I'm just, I don't know that I answered your question because it's so right now with all that's happening in my professional life, it is so, it feels so fresh. It feels like I'm starting back over again at 21 and trying to remind myself, even though I'm not, I'm 44, um, of all that it takes um, to, to really lean into the power of my mother, my grandmother, the love that you provide and so many others, and then just to simply use the data. I love you.
So as I've shared, um, we have been on the East Coast, we have been on the West Coast, and uh, I see some of my DC friends here, so it's exciting to see y'all here too. Uh, but tonight, again, was very special. It was a, it's been a full circle uh, moment for me. Um, this is where really my corazón has been filled. When I went back to Kansas um, to make laws for the state of Kansas, I was always thinking about how great it was, the things I learned here. When I went to Washington, D.C. for 13 years, same thing. I would always come here just to refuel my soul, get a leave the RC. Um, but it, it's, it's been a uh, special uh, showcasing the women in the book. And I always end with a, a gift to the ladies because you have given a gift to the world. So um, it's really hot here in Texas. <laughs> so instead of giving a, a piece of jewelry tonight, I'm going to give a, a fan to pull you all off and Nervoso from Mexico um, because you have wrapped your arms around our community and the powerful words that you have shared in the book. But these fans are very special. Patricia, if you can come up here. And little Caro, too, is my niece, Caro. If you can see, it says, yes, queen. <laughs> Every um, December, the three of us, we go to church uh, and, and honor La Virgencita, who empowers us every day. If you could stay up here. Frankie. Oh, that's fine. And Clinton. <laughs> yes. Anything I have, I'm going to be putting on my website. And Christina, I will put your campaign also on my website. Uh, everything that we're going to be doing. Also, Laura. Also, Chingona. Made in Mexico by other hermanas. What color would you all like? I'm a Democrat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So um, before we cut the cake, um, I just, again, want to thank you all for coming tonight. I was really nervous because I was like, is anybody going to show up? Um, but I, I think this shows a testament of how excited we are about and proud of our hermanas up here. Um, also about the book. Every time we've had a book signing in whatever city, um, we fill the room. And tonight was nothing else. But tonight, again, is very special. Um, I know Dr. Ellen Clark is not in the room. Uh, but she was also somebody who was helpful. I saw Teresa Nino was here earlier. She allowed me to use one of her bedrooms during the pandemic to do some more writing as well as Patricia um, and, and others. But I wanted to, and, and Anel Flores as well. Um, I did have a limpia at one point during the pandemic. And I remember Eric, I was like, you should talk to Anel. And we had coffee and then it led to another. And each time I had a conversation, I was just, I felt more empowered to do the book. So I'm excited um, to now cut the cake, but if we could take a, a group photo real fast and not leave it, and then we'll cut the cake. Oh yeah. And um, what's going to happen is they're going to cut the cake here, but the cake will go over in that corner. So that line will be for cake. Then they will be here signing your books. If you still want to buy more copies, you'll buy them in the bookstore at the counter. And they still have a few Chingona take-home items as well. So you buy the book in that room, cake in that corner, and then they'll sign here. Okay. 